Hey, this is Superdell, and today we're going to be talking about the perfect paramotor landing and, more importantly, how you learn it. So, first of all, let's show you the perfect landing. Absolutely perfect. Right here, bam, this is a brand new super student during training. Comes in, foot drags perfectly to landing. Bam, maintains control of the glider, sets it to the side, perfect, maintains control. So that is a perfect paramotor landing and obviously learned it and that was on a 14 square meter glider. Yeah, you heard me right. 14 square meter glider, brand new super student. Then you watch a video from like uh, Raul Rodriguez or Chandler, what's his name again? Yeah, Gene Baptist Chandler or something like that. Uh, some of these guys that are like really good acro pilots and they do a really good job coming in and landing. You'll see this perfect foot drag to landing. But keep in mind, they're some of the best uh, acro pilots in the world. They have a lifetime of experience, but do they teach it? Well, no, they, nobody really teaches it but me. So the question is, is how do you learn it? But first of all, let's go through some others because there's like a whole bunch of people out here. Here's a Rich Ramos talking about Brian Goff landing. So the main issues you see with people that don't know what they're doing and don't have proper training is their glide slope's gonna be wrong. So when you do the perfect paramotor landing, it's just like the super student. You come in, you touch your feet, you slide to a landing, okay? This guy, boom, comes in, flares all the way to the ground. Whack! <laughs> right in the ground. Imagine a 747 coming in and landing like this. Bam. Cra that's a, called a crash. End of plane. Where plane is retired and they have to haul everybody off. No. An airplane comes to the runway, pulls back, and then just floats until it runs out of airspeed. Boom. Gently sets down. It's going down the runway. It doesn't land into the runway. I mean, unless you're a Navy pilot and don't know how to land, then you just crash it into the deck. But, okay, that's just a joke. They, they know what they're doing. But the, uh, it's the same sort of principle. You don't land and hit the ground at that angle. You come to the ground, fl uh, flare it out. Now, flare is an overused term and oversimplification. Uh, many people make that mistake. But when people are acting as instructors who don't know how to land, that's a bad thing. So you really want to understand how or what the perfect landing looks like so you can recognize it so you can understand people who can do it and people who can't do it then there's a huge question of who can actually teach it so other big things is they're not landing into the wind they're not weight shifting properly this guy's actually oscillating while he's coming in it's like and this is an instructor giving like tips on how to do it he's like oscillating uh, not into the wind, not doing proper glider control, and they're just not using proper control coming in. Let's see, here's another guy, uh, Joe Jimmy Bob. This guy was the same sort of thing, all the same issues. They're coming in, they're not directly into the wind, they're not properly controlling the glider on the way down, their glide slope is long, and their flare timing is wrong. Uh, again, here's a super student, same thing, comes in, foot drags and lands. 14 square meter glider. It's awesome. Foot drag. Slides it in. Boom. Perfect. That's beautiful. I love watching super students because once they learn. Oh, hey, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on in. Give me, give me hugs. Give me hugs. Give me support. Oh, I love you. I love you, baby. You're so wicked. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My sweetie pie. She's so wonderful. Okie dokie. Let's see here. The uh, 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 what? banana. There you go. Okay. Uh, it, literally, I pulled it up. Mm. Oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, baby. All right. So, parahooners. First one, I put in perfect paramotor landing. Again, same thing, wrong glide slope. It just doesn't have the basics dialed in, doesn't have the understand. Another one, Sky School, totally wrong. They have no clue what they're doing. Midwest Powered Paragliding, no clue what they're doing. <laughs> Sky School, no clue, totally wrong, teaching it wrong, don't have it right. Uh, Trevor Steele, 
obviously makes perfect landings because I trained him to. Problem is, is he's not teaching others because he's not, when you try and train in some ruddy dirt field, you simply can't get enough hours to actually teach students the skills to do it properly. So it doesn't train it, even though he has the skills, it just doesn't apply anymore. Uh, this Matthew guy, same sort of thing. The, uh, it's like they come in and they literally come in and flare to the ground, bam, and hit the ground, totally wrong glide slope. Uh, Matt Minyard. So right here, here's the title of his video. Awesome paramotor tandem with perfect landing. Literally, he says perfect landing. And doesn't land into the wind, doesn't come in right, isn't properly controlling the glider, and watches glide slope, boom, into the ground. So same sort of thing right here. Watch this. Here we go. Comes in, watch the glide slope down, hits the ground. Wrong. That's not how you land. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody's going to watch just because of you. Because you're so beautiful. Mike Dunn and Dunn. Okay. Uh, so, Matt Minyard, again. These people are acting as instructors. If they can't recognize the difference between a horrible landing and a perfect landing, that's a major issue. They're not teaching it right. They don't understand it. They have no clue. So very, very important to get the correct landing. Here's another one, Kylo Glee. No freaking clue. Never had a day of training in his life. Just doesn't have any clue what he's doing. Um, and it's like you scroll through them and I watch them and it's like any skilled pilot can look at something and know whether these people know what they're doing. Uh, Tucker Gott, he actually can land pretty well. Does he teach it? No. Does he tell people where to go, how to learn? No. Does he give you proper tips on how to learn it? No. He tries to deceive you in every way away from proper training. So again, what is the perfect landing? Back to the super student. You come into the ground, your feet touch the ground. You slide perfectly matching the terrain, and doesn't matter if the train's going up and down, you match the terrain. It's not perfectly level, because the train's almost never perfectly level. If you have a little hill, <coughs> you have to add brakes faster to go up. Now, why do you slide your feet? Uh, this is kind of a martial arts thing, if you're a martial artist. You react faster to what you feel than what you see. So it's very, very valuable if you come in, you touch your feet to the ground, now your body knows exactly the altitude of your body. If your legs are coming into the ground, you can feel your legs coming up, boom, I better add brakes faster. If your legs are coming off the ground, whoa, hands better go back up, dump some lift, and come back down. So if you can touch your feet to the ground, now you can react to feel instead of what you see. If you're literally even three inches off the ground, if you're not touching the ground, you're gonna have a much harder time with that glide slope. So the perfect landing is just like you see super students doing it. It's beautiful. Bam, comes in. Notice the foot. This one's good because you can see the sand. Big foot drag, sliding it in, foot drag, slides it to a landing. That's pretty beautiful. A little stutter at the end, so, you know, but we'll give them like a 99 out of 100. It's pretty freaking good for, yeah, a new student. That's awesome. Foot drag, slide to landing. That's what the perfect landing is. Now, again, you watch someone like Raul Rodriguez or uh, Chandler, what the heck's the guy's name? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, Gene, Baptist Chandler, that, yeah, that guy. You watch the video, it's really cool because he comes in, he slides the pool. Hey, he doesn't have it perfectly level, but it doesn't matter, he's got the skill. You watch him on the ski slopes and he's matching the slopes. That's skills, that's skills, that's doing it right. He's coming in to the ground, touching the foot, perfectly matching the ground. That's beautiful skills, you see that skill. But the problem is, is how do you learn it? These guys took years and years and years to get it. Um, kind of like Tucker got. He can actually land fairly well now, but it took him years. He didn't learn it because he didn't get any proper training. I mean, he went to Aviator PPG and they're totally incompetent. They just chuck you in the sky without any real ability to control the glider. So they're not learning it there or any other paragliding schools. They're not teaching it 
because it takes an enormous amount of extremely good training to learn it. Okay, so that's how you do it. Now, let me explain some of the pieces because there's a lot of pieces that are extremely difficult. So one of which is land into the wind. Now you think that's easy? Well, almost all these guys did it wrong other than the guys that are master pilots that will know to land exactly into the wind. So is the instructor giving advice to land into the wind? That's one of the things you wanna look for uh, that they're, they're managing that, that you're coming in. Now an interesting thing to look for is when you're coming in, instead of using brake input, which totally messes you up and can actually, you know, it limits the energy that's in the glider because if you're pulling brakes to make directional corrections, you're losing the actual energy in the glider and you're getting deeper in the brakes and you just don't have as much energy in the glider left to balance out that perfect foot drag to landing. So check this out. You want to know how to turn when you're coming in? This is how you do it. Got it? <laughs> you won't see that at any other school. You lean your head. Just your head leaning will turn the glider. It's called weight shift. So if you can use weight shift for directional control, you're coming into land, lean your head, boom. But don't do this <laughs> because it works incredibly well and you'll actually create oscillations if you throw your head too fast. So you lean your head in, bring your head out, and you can control just by leaning your head is one of the ways we teach it. Very, very valuable because then you're keeping all the energy. Now, keep it hands. Uh, hands are up, but what is hands up? Hands up isn't all the way up. It's not. Hands up is up to about an ounce or so of pressure where you can still feel the brake lines. You do not stick your hands all the way to zero or you have no feel and control for the glider. You can't active pilot anymore because again, you've lost that feel. You're slacking the brake line. So you would never go hands all the way up. You're always hands with a couple of ounces of pressure so you can still feel if a you know, fly lands on your line and farts, you'll be able to feel it through the glider in that line if you're touching the lines. But you're coming up hands up meaning you still have a touch of brake so you can still feel what's going on and then use weight shift for directional input lean your head boop, lean your body to get yourself into the wind and set up for the flare now don't worry it's much harder than that <laughs> it gets worse so how do you control the perfect altitude well to control that perfect altitude is all about brakes, but it's much harder than you think because when you first start pulling brakes, you're going full speed with the glider because your hands are all the way up to two ounces of pressure. So you're coming in full speed. So when you first start pulling brakes, your brakes are gonna be very responsive. So you have to pull very slowly at first, very slowly. So the, uh, I saw these guys going a one, two, three, four, no. Uh-uh, <laughs> totally wrong. You don't go position, jerk, jerk, jerk. Absolutely not. It's You learn how to do it properly with proper glider control. But we're gonna get to that piece next. So back to the flare. What is a flare? Don't use the word flare, because I don't like it. It kind of describes what you're doing, but there's so many pieces to it. When you first start pulling brakes, it is very, very responsive. So it's very, very slow movement with your brakes. As you start to slow down, your glider becomes less and less responsive. So you then have to pull brakes faster and faster and faster. So as you get into the brakes, you're pulling faster, 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 faster. And then the last about a foot, you're almost just stuffing the brakes all the way down. And you would never jerk brakes because jerking brakes separates the airflow from the glider and actually causes you to lose lift. So if you come in and jerk brakes, you're actually gonna just dump yourself into the ground and pound to the ground. Um, okay, so you're using the brakes to come to matching the terrain, or let's say your train's level. So you're gonna bring it to level. If you're sinking, add brakes faster. If you start climbing, you screwed up and pulled brakes too fast and there's two ways to do it. You can stop pulling brakes, which is what we have to tell a newbie, 
or if you do it correctly, you can actually put your hands up and dump lift. So if the glider tries to climb because you pulled brakes too fast and started going up, you can actually put your hands up and then immediately back down once you spill the lift, get yourself back to level. Now, if we tell that to a student too soon and tell them to put their hands up, they won't be able to time it fast enough and it can actually spill lift and put them into the ground. So the it's important to kind of add the pieces in exactly at the right time for the age weight of the student and their skill level and the size of the glider and the wind conditions and all the pieces. I mean, just having me pick which glider you're flying is like worth the entire cost of super training. I mean, this is there's so much to it. This is not something you just go learn from Joe Jimmy Bob who flew a couple of times and now thinks he's gonna teach you how to get in the air. Yeah, that's not how you learn it. Um, the, uh, some of these other guys that have skills that didn't learn from super training, um, these other pilots, keep in mind, they took years and years and years to dial in their skills because they weren't taught how to do it properly. They literally are just kind of very rare people that did kind of figure it out on their own from, you know, this and that and the other thing and experience, which is, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be flying around without the epitome of active piloting glider control for years. That's a bad idea. It's better to learn the glider control before you ever leave the ground. But flare timing, you're coming in, bring the glider to level, foot drag to a landing. That's the way you do it. Now, when you're first starting out, you're doing uh, power to idle landings. Never kill your motor. That's another huge one. You'll see people shutting their motor off. Can you imagine a 747 coming into land with the engines off? You got no options. So never ever push a bad landing. If your landing's not perfect, throttle up and go around. So if you're coming in with your engine off, your instructor is a moron and probably using gear so horrible, they're scared to death you're gonna destroy the gear and they didn't train you properly. So they expect you to fully lose control and destroy your gear. Where at super training, if you destroy the gear, I pay for it. So I'm pretty freaking confident <laughs> that you're not gonna destroy the gear. And uh, yes, and so you can come in with the motor on because I know you have the skills. I put them there before I put you in the sky. So huge opposite ends of the spectrum where people are so untrained, they're literally told to shut off the motor. But what happens if you oscillate violently? Boom, people pound into the ground, get seriously injured. People have died literally because they tried to just come in motor off. Bad, faults, wrong instruction. Never, ever, ever try and land motor off. Um, you gotta get proper training, learn how to fly. If you hear people or see people shutting their engine off when they're coming in to land, incompetent instructor. Get rid of them, don't even think about going there. Very important you get good instruction. Really, how do you test an instructor's ability? Look at their students. That should be the ultimate result. If you can watch a brand new student land a 14 square meter with a perfect foot drag to landing, that student actually has really good skills. So landing into the wind, maintaining that glide slope to the ground, coming in, touching the foot, sliding it to the ground, um, and sliding it to a stop, and pulling brakes, every inch of brakes, or until you come to a complete stop. So it's either or, one or the other. If you pull brakes and you come to a complete stop, stop pulling the brakes. Wherever you're at in the brakes, you stop right there because you've come to a stop. If you keep pulling brakes, you're then gonna go backwards and get drug over backwards. So it depends on the wind. If you have higher winds, you might only pull six, seven inches of brakes for that landing once it brings you to the stop. So it's very important that as your skills progress um, to where you can deal with that wind, one of the reasons for that is that you can set up that glide slope quicker and so you can bring it into a perfect landing using less brakes, making a faster transition from gliding in to foot drag shoop, to stopping. Bam, one, two, three, glide, foot drag, stop. All using brakes, weight shift, leaning, direction, all the little pieces. There's so many pieces, like it would be a whole book to do this. So I don't wanna make this video too long, we're already 20 minutes in and we're just getting to the basic features. But um, let's go on to how do you learn it? So the way you actually learn this, 
why can a brand new super student literally land like a, you know, one of the world's best acro pilots who's been flying for 30 years or whatever? Why can a brand new super student literally do the same thing that these guys that have been flying a whole lifetime can do? Training, because they're trained properly. So how do we do it? Well, it's all glider control. And it takes 25 to 60 hours of kiting. How are you gonna get 25 to 60 hours of kiting into one training class in some rutted field in the desert or in Ohio? It's not gonna happen. You go out there, you kite for what, 15 minutes, an hour, a day. I mean, even if you got one hour every day, which you're not in those types of areas, that would only give you eight hours in eight days or 10 hours in 10 days. <laughs> and where's the rest of the training? You didn't even, you can't even get in the sky till you got the glider control. So obviously they're chucking people in the sky. Literally what's typical is you'll get anywhere from 15 minutes to two to three hours of glider control. That's it. That's what most schools out there are like, um, partly because they don't know what they're doing, partly because they simply just don't have the right location. So if somebody isn't training at the perfect beach location, you can't go out there and kite for 25 to 60 hours. So all the skills you've got to learn one at a piece. There's so many little pieces to the glider control, but ultimately what you're working towards is controlling the altitude of your butt. When you see super students kiting up a trailer or kiting up a pole or just standing on a beam and they're balancing their body or you just see them standing on the ground and their feet are out in front of them, that's a critical thing to look for. If you see anyone standing lock-legged, bam, they're doing it wrong. If their body weight is on their feet, their glider is not loaded, they ain't learning jack. That's like day one newbie stuff is yeah, body weight on the feet, you're just trying to keep the glider up. That's literally step one. Once you start getting the skills, it's all about keeping your feet out in front of you. So when your feet out are in front of you and your butt's hanging out over the air, as you fall backwards, boom, you add brakes. That produces more lift and picks your butt back up. If it lifts you up and starts dragging you, you put your hands back up and spill lift. That drops you back down. If you fall backwards, brakes, hands up, 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 brakes. And it goes so fast, you're literally making four to five corrections per second to perfectly manage the lift of the glider to control the altitude of your butt or the altitude of your body using the glider. How do you land? you control the altitude of your body using the glider. If you tried to learn how to land by landing, you only get, what, maybe six seconds of practice doing a landing, maybe six seconds. You would have to do 88,000 landings <laughs> in order to get the same amount of glider control as you can get in one super training class. Not gonna happen. I don't think anybody in the world has 88,000 flights. It's not gonna happen. So you can't teach that skill by doing that, which is why these people, even people that have been out there, they've been pretending to be instructors for years. They don't have a clue because they never learned it properly. And they're not that one in a thousand, uh, you know, Raul Rodriguez who just happened to figure it out on his own. That's very, very rare. And it took him a lifetime to do it. So it's like, Especially, let's say that that same guy that's like the one in a thousand guy took super training. He'd have had those schools right, the skills right from the get go. He'd have come out of super training, a freaking master pilot. Imagine where he would have been now or how quickly he would have progressed to all the other dynamics um, of capability and experience. It just changes everything when you get the skills right up front. Again, Let's see any other class where you got students foot dragging to landing on a 14 square meter. Where's that outcome in any other school? That's what you're looking for is the actual results. How do you compare schools? Compare results. So hanging that butt out there, boom, that's what we're doing. Controlling that altitude, up, down, up, down, up, down, using the brakes, left, right. You're controlling direction, you're controlling the altitude, controlling the loading everything with those brakes to where you don't even have to think about it. So you'll literally be able to control the glider with your eyes closed forwards and backwards perfectly. If you can't, 
we don't put you in the air. So you literally will be able to do that. Uh, with your feet touching the ground, you also have that feel, so you're gonna have faster response. So when you come into land, boop, you touch your feet, and you should have that skill. So why do super students pick up to this level of skill so quickly? Because they have the skill before they ever left the ground. They had 25 to 60 hours of developing this level of loading and glider control before they ever flew. So that's why <laughs> if you totally destroy $13,000 worth of paramotor gear at super training, I pay for it. I'm literally guaranteeing your skills are gonna be so high that you're not gonna damage any gear. Again, another reason, super training is the only school in the world to go to. Because one little oops anywhere else, boom, you could be $8,000 in repairs and it can really jack up your day because you're the one paying for the repairs which also gives them the incentive to not train you properly because that way they can make thousands more on you when you destroy the gear. But this skill takes massive amount of training, doing it right, that's how we do it. And there's hundreds more pieces in there, but hopefully that gives you some sort of understanding on the differences between all these other schools and people out there pretending to be instructors who literally don't even have the basics down and they're pretending to be instructors and other people that might have some skills but they don't teach them because they're not in the right location they're not getting the students the right amount of hours and they just don't have the aptitude to be an actual instructor to come up with results like that show me anyone else's students coming up with the results like this you watch super students getting hundreds of flights now another little interesting thing i actually went through uh the videos and counted up the directions that these people got literally they were getting as little as about three directions like okay turn and flare that's like two directions i went through a, one of my videos in 37 seconds of a touch and go i had given them 58 directions 58 go through some of my videos where you see super students doing touch and goes and listen how many directions i'm giving them left left right both brakes hands up now <laughs> it's like all these little pieces to fine tune every little detail of direction loading glider control perfect flare timing everything to perfection you're getting all the pieces, 58 corrections versus three. And the three, they did wrong. They didn't even get it because they didn't have that experience or the skills to actually be able to even follow the directions because they couldn't do it in the first place. Where the super student, look at the videos, 58 directions and they followed probably at least 50 of them. 50 of them because we had 25 to 60 hours working together where they mastered those skills before they left the ground and we built that trust and communication back and forth so they learned the, the directions and understand exactly what's going on i'm not teaching them basically i'm not telling them how to do it I'm basically just reminding them and keeping their brain focused so people don't get nervous. They hear the voice constantly talking, giving them corrections. They know what they're supposed to be doing. I'm just cementing, hey, this is the correct thing to be doing now. And all the little pieces of loading control, direction, oscillation, exactly how to keep everything perfect. 58 directions in 37 seconds between literally like three at another school look at the facts look at the results you learn it by going through super training and getting proper skills if there's another school link a video let's see their students landing perfectly on 14 square meter gliders in their first class so it's like the results are the results that's how to do it that's how to get it that's how to double check who knows what they're doing and who's actually getting the results just because someone has the skill doesn't mean they're training in the perfect location and getting you 60 80 hours of practice so that you can do it there's a huge difference between they can do it and you can do it so use your head look at the facts look at the results do it right learn how to do it and then not only will you be able to 
take off and land beautifully. But that skill is exactly the same skill it takes to prevent collapses in the air. I'll have to explain that more. But if you can make a perfect landing, and it's all about active piloting, if you can maintain that perfect loading and correction and pitch, that's what active piloting, that's how you prevent a collapse. Unless you have a hoax flex death trap, then you can't prevent collapses with them, you just die. That's a whole different subject. So, this is Superdell. Hopefully you learned something. Hi, cutie. Mm. So sweet. I love her. She's so wonderful. Okay, see you later.